you never want an inaccurate reading when you're using a thermocouple or temperature probe, um, this video is for you. Um, so in this video I'm going to use a MAC6675 thermocouple module to make a thermocouple or temperature probe system and I'm not only going to make it but I'm going to tell you how to calibrate it and then give you tips on how to use it. I'm going to be talking about some things that people don't typically talk about but it's really critical to understand these things if you want to make sure you're getting an accurate temperature. Okay, so this is the thermocouple or temperature sensor module. So here's a little OLED display that's displaying the temperature in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. And it's connected to an Arduino. And the Arduino is connected to this MAX 6675 module, which is reading the voltage difference between the thermocouple. So this is the actual thermocouple here. It's two wires with different uh, resistances when you heat them up and because of the different resistances you get a voltage drop across the wires and you can measure that. There's some really great YouTube videos that explains this further but it's basically just two different wire materials that are fused together at the end there and then they're connected at the end here and you read the voltage difference in with this module which then outputs it to the Arduino which then interprets it and then outputs it to this display. But of course um, you have to calibrate this module and you do that using something with a known temperature and so that's what this video is going to show you how to do. And I'll include a wiring schematic in the video or in the description and I'm just using jumper cables here to connect these but I think I'm going to actually strip them and then just solder them directly to the Arduino so I don't get any loose connections ever. Another thing to note that's important is that these thermocouples, they come in this casing here. So there's actually the thermocouple here, the two wires soldered together and they fit inside this hollow tube here. And then there's this threaded component that slides over it. And so the problem with this though is that there's an air gap between this outer casing and the thermocouple inside here. Um, so you don't get an accurate temperature reading because the heat takes a long time to warm up this thermocouple or may not warm it up to the actual temperature that this casing is in contact with. Um, so the way to fix this um, to get this to give you an accurate temperature reading is one, you can just remove this thermocouple, um, but then it's harder to secure it in place. So you might want to put it in here to have a good place to secure it. So if you still want to keep this threaded thing, which you have to do to get an accurate reading, and this is important, and I see almost, I've never seen anyone talk about this, but what you need to do is you need to take some thermal paste and just put it in here and then you need to use like a toothpick and sh shove it down there and then put some on the thermocouple itself and then you can just push this down and really make sure you've filled up all of the hollow space in here so then you get, get good heat transfer from the outer casing to the thermocouple inside and then also when you go to screw this in into your threaded hole um, make sure to put some thermal paste on the outside here so you get good heat transfer um, from the surface that you're screwing into to the casing because you can also have an air gap there. So this is really critical if you're screwing this into say a hot plate if you want to get an accurate temperature reading and I've never seen anyone talk about this so you must do this if you want an accurate reading. To give you a sense of how inaccurate these can be if you don't put the thermal paste in here. If you if I screw this into one of my hot plates, they've been off by 10 degrees Celsius or more, which is a very significant amount to be off by. And I forgot to mention the way you remove this thing, it's crimped on here. So this piece is a tube that's been crimped or flattened. So you just squish it with some needle nose pliers until it forms a more round shape again, and then you can slide it out. If anyone knows where to buy the individual components so you don't have to uncrimp it, that would be great. Just comment below. 
Okay, so now it's time to calibrate the thermocouple, and this is very easy. You just need a pot of boiling water and a bowl or a cup filled with ice and some water. So right now it's reading about 21 degrees Celsius or so. So if we put it in the freezing cold water, it should go down to about zero degrees Celsius. And this one has been previously calibrated, so it's actually right about right on the money there at zero degrees Celsius. And just make sure the thermocouple is submerged well and touching the ice is good. And okay, so now let's put it in the boiling pot of water and make sure there's bubbles in the water so you know it's actually boiling. And we put it there and it's about 100 degrees Celsius. So this thermocouple is calibrated, uh, this program, so we don't need to do anything for this, but I'll show you. Uh, in the code what to do if it's off by say like one or two degrees or so Okay, so this is the max 6675 temperature sensor code for the Arduino Nano um, This is just in the standard Arduino editor um, And note that this code is working with the Arduino Nano So if you have a different Arduino that you're using, I mean you can still get it to work just You'll have to change the pin numbers. So you're using this MISO communication protocol. There's like an SO pin, a CS pin, and a SCK pin. So just make sure that you look up um, whatever the pin numbers are on your Arduino and make sure they're set appropriately. Um, at the top here, um, you're setting the calibration offset. So in for the degrees Celsius reading. So here you're just subtracting 1.75 degrees Celsius from whatever the temperature sensor thinks it's reading. Um, I, I just found experimentally from the boiling water and the ice water that this is what works for my temperature sensor. It'll be different for yours. Um, and then this just converts the Celsius reading into Fahrenheit. Um, you will need some libraries installed so make sure you have those installed you need the max 6675 library this adafruit underscore gfx and the adafruit ssd 1306 so to do that just go to tools and then manage libraries and then it'll pop up in a second year um, so then it's just updating the list of the installed libraries and you can just search like max 6675 and for all these libraries you're going to want the library by Adafruit so right here you can see I already have it installed the max 6675 by Adafruit just make sure you have that installed um, so we already went over the pinouts um, this is setting up the temperature sensor module here um, and then this is setting up the display here. Just a quick note, depending on what display you have, you might have to enter 0x3C or 0x3D. So if the code isn't working, try changing this C to a D. Um, then you delay two seconds to give the display some time to initialize, and then you just print the temperature reading. And then between temperature readings, you wait half a second or 500 milliseconds, and you need to wait at least 250 milliseconds between readings. Otherwise, it's too quick. Um, so yeah, that's it. Just download and plug this code in if it's a nano. And then make sure the pins are the same. And if it's a different Arduino, just look up the different Arduino. So that's the code. It's very simple. So a quick note on the thermocouple. Make sure that no wires bef are crossed. Like these two portions aren't touching each other. Make sure only the point where the two wires are welded together is what's touching when you're trying to measure the surface temperature of something. And this is a hot plate. I've got it heated to about 39, 40 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know if I've given it enough time to equilibrate yet, um, but if I just touch the probe to the surface of the hot plate, um, it'll tell me what the temperature is. 
And I'll just read that as, say, like 32 degrees Celsius or something like that, 31. But then this says it's 40 degrees Celsius, so which is right? And it's important to know when you're measuring the surface of something, you don't have very good surface contact with the, the thermocouple, the actual junction there. So you don't get a very good heat transfer from the surface to that thermocouple. So what you want to do is you want to take some heat transfer paste and I'm using this Trerice 107-0001 I think I got it from Granger and then you just submerge the thermocouple in the thermal paste and just make sure it's spread around pretty well there and kind of push it down um, and make sure it's in there and then you'll notice that the temperature is already higher because you've got better heat transfer. So it's reading about 35, 35 to 35.5. And I noted on here that I need to subtract four from this um, temperature module. So this is actually fairly accurate. This should, even though it says 40, it's really about 36, which is about what I was giving me on the temperature sensor reading. So just a uh, important note if you're ever measuring the surface temperature of something. And by the way, these PID controllers are super common um, ways to control temperature. They just have a thermocouple that plugs in the back, um, but they are commonly, they're not, give, they're not calibrated. So you really have to follow this calibration procedure that I walked through in this video if you want to calibrate these thermocouples. And there's a menu options that you can use to calibrate the temperature on here. And I'll go over that in my video where I show you how to make a hot plate. Okay, so now you know how to calibrate a thermocouple or a temperature sensor probe. So thanks for joining me in my lab slash bedroom today. Um, if you found this video helpful or you liked it, please like and subscribe. Subscribers would really help me out. Um, I'm making some devices here um, that lets you grow human tissues with blood vessels in the lab. So if you ever want some replacement organs in the future, um, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Um, and then stay tuned for some more DIY science videos. I'm going to make some videos on how to do high resolution photolithography because I'm making something called microflick devices. So there'll be some pretty interesting videos coming up.